If you don't know exactly what you want in life to the finest detail, how are you going to recognise the opportunity when it comes to you? Honestly, it's just this disgusting amount yeah. of you know, ambition, drive, you know, not motivation. Motivation is temporary. Work the hardest you can in everything you do because you want to make sure that when you go somewhere else that you're at the top of your own form. First of all, you're probably thinking like, am I in a professional setting? Yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> is this the first time I've ever done this? Yes, it is. So I'm trying to freestyle here as much as possible. But this video, I think, is one of the most influential videos I'm about to make. And the reason why I'm making it is because I think it, Ben here, can bring so much value. He's brought so much value to myself. And I'll kind of dive into that. But I wanted to film it. I wanted to make sure this was captured. Only because, number one, I want to look back at this as I grow older as well and use this as a reference point. But also, this is an opportunity for any of you to, number one, ask me a question. I can relate to Ben, but just kind of learn from Ben's experience. So mm. thank you very much for taking the time. My pleasure. My pleasure. So... I met Ben about two years ago now. Yep, yep. Two years ago, I was doing my internship and Ben was a client for... More or less, yeah, yeah, yeah for, exactly. For yeah. a company I was working with. But honestly, the reason why I'm having you here and from the title of the video, it's understanding. So the key theme here is just going through your 20s, right? So yep. especially when you're starting off, when you have n no idea. Like I've got no idea. I'm just navigating it through. Absolutely, yeah. But you're someone that has gone through so many hurdles, yeah. gone through so many challenges, but come out the other side with an incredible portfolio and an incredible experience platter. Mm. And the way you are you are at the moment, the position you're in now, is mm. it's inspiring. So I wanted to I kind of, so. yeah. Yeah, I wanted to kind of dive in a little bit deeper into you yeah. and your, your background, your motivations and your drive. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, without you know, me taking it, you know, any further, if you can just introduce yourself. Yeah. So look, so I'm, I'm yeah. Ben, as we said, um, so my background is is banking. Um, I got into a bank when I was 18 years old. I started as a cashier, so uh, the bottom of the pile. Um, I had no idea I wanted to work in banking, uh, but it was just something, weirdly enough, I fell into as an opportunity that sounded like a good one. And... Um, I'll be honest, I studied hard for the interview because I thought, well, this could be a career. Um, but I didn't really know anything about it at the time. And I didn't necessarily like finance. I didn't really like money. Uh, I didn't like maths. Let me clarify that. Um, and I got a C in maths in, in GCSE, so it was nothing special. But um, when I turned 18, I was blessed to get that job. Um, and for the first nine months, I was a cashier and I used to have a great time. I used to muck about a bit. It was, it was a very fun environment, weirdly enough. I remember my introduction to work being quite interesting because, you know, you're treated like an adult, although there was a lot of older people uh, there. Um, it was all quite a good laugh really. Um, and then I ended up following on my career in banking and, and went on to being a business manager, which essentially meant that I looked after a portfolio of business clients, normally businesses anywhere, you know, up to 25 million pounds. So really interesting clients, really interesting businesses um, and every industry. So every type of person, you know, you get your plumber, uh, right your way to the guy selling supercars. That was my biggest client, a guy that had some really cool cars trust me um what's one of the one of the best oh, cars oh come on everything yeah. you know i'm yeah. talking lambos you know rolls yeah. royces these guys were uh, you know um essentially like a hr owen if you know oh, okay. hr owen yeah, yeah. yeah so really cool business um but yeah bottom line is i figured out there was one thing i was good at um and i was just good at talking to people and i have never been the smartest kid in the room i've never been the most intelligent and I've now come to realize that that's probably my biggest gift because the smartest guy in the room will always try to be the best at something. Whereas I've always realized I'm not the best and found those around me who are and use them to support me to get to where I want to go. And from my banking career, I used to use the people within the organization uh, and I used the people that knew the answers and I got them to you know, give them to me. The one thing I did is I found the people who knew what was going on and knew how to fix things and I got them to fix my problems and help me to provide an amazing service to my clients. Um, 
but more than anything, you know, that was what it was. And I, I, and I had a fantastic time working in banking. And, you know, so since then, uh, you know, nine months ago, I left the bank um, because I got fed up of not being able to go the extra mile for my clients. And additionally, I have always had a dream that I wanted to start my own company. I've always had a dream that I want to make a difference. And I've always believed that I can change the world. Uh, and I know it's a big city statement, but uh, uh, you know, I was actually saying earlier, look, changing the world can be as simple as changing one tiny thing, uh, but it makes an impact. I mean, let's remember the butterfly effect talks about if you went back in time and killed a butterfly, you'd change the whole future. So if you do one thing today in a positive way, mm -hmm. you've changed the world in a positive way. So, you know, we can make small impacts, big impacts, but my goal now um, with my new company, Panthera Consultancy, um, is to provide business finance and foreign exchange to businesses and to support them in their growth, support them to take on new challenges, take on new assets, take on new opportunities, uh, and also solve problems and help them to save money with foreign exchange, help them to mitigate risks of uh, changing exchange rates. Uh, but more than anything, I get to help people. You know, yeah. I get to make a difference. So yeah, that's a little bit of a background so from my career. Now you've you're you're you've left the nine to five life. Absolutely. Right, and now you've got your own business. Indeed. Okay, let's kind of dive into a little bit of that because mm. I know for personal personal reasons as well, but from my friends, mm. we've just come out of university. Yep. You know, we we're into jobs now. I'm not sure exactly what you want to do, and and mm. if someone didn't even go to university, sometimes you just have that lack of. Yeah. Maybe like knowledge on, on where you want to take your life, right? Absolutely, yeah. What is it that made you tick? Like, I know I want to start a business. Is it the yeah. clients? Is it the net? What was it? Well, I was lucky in a way. So, I mean, the one thing I, you know, I was lucky because I loved banking and I loved businesses and I loved helping people, I guess. Um, and being in business banking and now being a broker and foreign exchange provider, the main thing you do is provide solutions. And I loved doing that. So, you know, if I was to say to someone, you know, if you're in a job and, you know, if you're not happy, the best thing to do is to, to leave that job in your 20s. I would recommend, like, thing is, I'm not going to sit here and try and pretend that I know everything. But what I do know is that if you can figure out something that you like doing, You'll never work a day in your life. We've all heard that saying. And I never work a day in my life because I love what I do, you know. But more than anything now, it is so easy to wake up in the morning and get excited about what I do. It's so easy for me to, you know, know why I'm doing it and what it's all about. So in a sense, you know, I, 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 I would try and say fail fast, mm -hmm. you know, get all those bad businesses, bad uh, experiences behind you until you find something you're you're good at and you enjoy. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the best way to learn once you figure out that thing is to, is to go out on your own. I tell you now, I've learned more in the last you know, eight months than I've learned in my entire life. I've learned how to, be, to do marketing. I've learned how to set up a company. I've learned how to talk to different suppliers based on the types of things I'm trying to provide. I've learned how to have conversations in sales that work you know, and don't work. You know, I've learned how to set up systems to be able to track things. I've learned how to do banking. I've learned how to, in terms of dealing with my own banking accounts. And you know, you, you, when you're a business owner, you're not just doing what you're doing. I mean, that's great, you know, but even a plumber, Somebody has to do your accounts, you know, somebody has to go and get you more business. You know, whatever you're doing, you have to be able to do everything a little bit, right? So, you know, and, and that, that, what I'd say is if you find something you love, yeah. right, do it yourself. Well, okay, and then one actually question is something that I've al always been thinking about recently mm. is you know you want to start a business. Yeah. Right? You know that that is definitely the route you want to go down because, number one, like you said, you learn so much skills. Oh, and, and massively. You said eight, you've, you've learned more in eight months eight than months you have... In my entire career in the bank. Yeah. In so, my entire career, without a doubt. Okay, so you, you, let's say hypothetically a person, young yeah. person, yeah. wants to do that. Yeah. They don't really know anyone that has run a business before. Yeah. All they've got is really the internet and yeah. maybe a video like this. Absolutely, yeah. What would you say is, you know, what industry would you want to go into? Is it, How would you choose that? What kind of... What, what, what you're good at really you know like just think about what you like doing because if, if, you, if you know what you like doing mm -hmm. you're going to discover 
what you're good at. If you discover what you're good at, you're going to discover what makes your customers happy. And therefore, it's a win-win-win okay. all the way down. So everyone's individual. Everyone likes their own things. You know, I like people. And it just so happens that I've got experience and skills that I've learnt in finance. Let me just clarify. Okay. Anyone could do what I do. Anyone. The only thing that I don't know if everyone could do is talk as much bullshit as I do. I'll clarify that now, right? Because yeah. I can chat shit. I'm a bit of a salesman in mm -hmm. that sense. And sorry if I'm not meant to be swearing. No, nah, that's all right. It's all right. That's, <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, look, I, w I was one of the dumbest kids in school. Uh, I did really badly in most of my exams. I was actually expelled um, from one of my schools. So um, yeah, I was not that kid that yeah. you would have thought worked in a bank or would have started his own company. I was that kid that you thought, oh, he'll probably be arrested by the time he was 19. But what happened is I just managed to figure out all the things that don't work really quickly uh, and then figured out, wait a minute, I can actually talk. And I'm quite good at talking to other people and building relationships and remembering key things about people because relationships is all about listening, mm -hmm. remembering, understanding, saying, well, okay, you know, a lot of people I work with, they have kids, families, you know, what's your kids' names, you know, what they've been up to, understanding that, when's their birthday, you know, you remember these things, you send them a message on their birthday, happy birthday, like, wow, why is this guy, you know, ruin my birthday? You become special, you become somebody that actually listens, actually pays attention, and, and trust me, it makes, you know, in relationships, which you'll need in any type of business, just to clarify, is the most important thing. I mean, if you have good relationships, your business will grow, always. Okay. So it's about active listening. Active listening. It's is about massive. yeah. Okay, and then yeah. that's, that's interesting. Yeah, it makes yeah. sense. It, that makes sense as well. Mm. So also, were there any kind of inspirations for you specifically when you were maybe transitioning from a nine to five life into the business world, or yeah. you said you come, you came from a different background as well, completely yeah. different mindset before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flip that switch. Well, was there any personnel? Definitely. You know, when I was a kid, um, I went down a very bad road, shall we say. And um, I had a situation where I got in a lot of trouble, uh, kind of eye-opened, it uh, was an eye-opening moment for me, shall we say. Um, I can get into detail if you want, but, you know, uh, additionally, I actually passed and got C's in my GCSE, you know, so it wasn't a complete failure. Um, that was another big moment for me. But I think the big thing was, is I was, after a really bad time in my life, I got into the gym, got into really good shape and realized that I had control over something and realized that all I needed to do was be consistent every single day. And that led me into everything else, you know, and, and then when you come back to people and mentors and things like that, um, I think I've been lucky to have some people in my working life who have nurtured me. Um, I always saw them as successful and deliberately tried to follow in their footsteps, actively listened to them, did what they wanted me to do to become closer to them. And because of that, our relationship developed to the point where they supported me in my growth. And that meant that when opportunities arose, they fought for me and I was able to take on opportunities because at the end of the day, it's all about who has control over your future in a corporate job. And how can they, you know, how can they help you? Now, when it came to the business and starting up on my own, um, other than reading a load of books, um, one kind of inspirational person is Stephen Barlett, uh, Diary of yeah. the CEO. I like listening to his podcast. He was a young guy as well. So I yeah. think perfect for anyone who doesn't know about Stephen, definitely listen to him. Um, he was a young guy, major, majorly successful, and he's done really well. And uh, listening to his ideas, his sort of take on being a young person and, and navigating the, the business world has always been interesting. I felt like I had a, you know, I feel a bit more in common with him, I yeah, guess. Yeah. You know, a lot of older people, there's, you know, it was a different world, you know, years ago. You know, as we always say, you know, our grandparents bought houses for eight thousand pounds. No, now you have an aluminium home property. Way, well, hey, you know, well done. You've, you know. Yeah. Whereas people like him, you know, they've been in the same life and style as us, and he's obviously come from a stage where he was stealing pizza. Yeah. Uh, in university to becoming, you know, one of the most successful entrepreneurs and being on Dragon's Den. So he would, I say, is an inspiration, but lots of books. You yeah. know, I always set a goal every year to read a book a month. 
Um, I think that's a really powerful tool to ensure that you're, you're always learning, always training, yeah. really important. Um, but it's all about, yeah. Is there a specific type of like approach with books? So recently I've actually taken on the approach where, let's say I'm lacking a skill. Let's, mm. say, it's, let's say it's people. I yeah. can't really talk, let's say I can't really talk to people well. Yeah, yeah. Or I, and I know that I can improve. Yeah. My approach now is to read upon all the books, all the top top selling books on, that on people yeah. itself or talking, public speaking or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Just to try and understand, implement those. Absolutely, and yeah. And to try yeah. and boost that skill. It's like a game, right? Yeah, we were talking no. off camera. Well, like, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Boost that skill. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I don't necessarily have a strategic way of looking at books, but I think it's a great idea. I think what you've done there is a fantastic idea. Um, and I would consider taking on something like that because at the end of the day, that means you're focusing on the channels that need work. Yeah. Uh, and additionally, maybe if there's something you're already good at, becoming better at. Uh, the key overall thing is that, you know, I always read sort of books that would provide self-help yeah. one way or another because yeah. it, I don't read is it fiction. I, you know, I mean, no, no, uh, yeah, fiction, I yeah, mean, let me, same. Yeah, let yeah, me yeah. clarify one thing. I mean, I'm dyslexic. Reading is a pain for me. I don't like reading. I become better at it. Nowadays, I enjoy it a bit more because I'm able to do it more. But let me tell you, I've had a, you know, I mean, in my GCSEs, I had a reader and a writer. So I had a lady sit next to me, read me the question, and write it down for me. That's how bad I am at reading and writing. You know, no one understood. Yeah, yeah. Terrible, absolutely. So um, it was, yeah, no, so, but now, like, let me just tell you the right thing. I say I'm dyslexic. I'm not dyslexic. You are what you say you are, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If you say you're dyslexic, you'll hold yourself back and you'll become dyslexic. If you say that you have ADHD, then you'll hold yourself back and you'll get distracted. If you say that you can't do something, you won't do it because you don't believe you can. So you have to believe that you can accomplish anything. I believe that I could read books and then now I'm reading books all the time. I'm learning more. If I'm not reading books, I'm listening to podcasts. Yeah. But always, I don't even listen to music that much anymore because I listen to music in the gym or if I'm running or if I'm training um, because that's the only time that you need something to give you a bit of energy. Otherwise, podcasts, books, you need to get on it. So you touched on a little bit about self-belief. Yeah. I think self-belief is critical, but the, uh, my question is, when you're starting off something, let's say when the first time you, the first month or a mm. couple months in your new business, yeah. there wasn't much self-belief naturally because you haven't really necessarily achieved anything, right? Yeah. So when you haven't had the experience of success, yeah. how do you maintain and, and elevate self-belief so that you know that you will one day achieve it? Straight, straight up, be delusional. You know, if you, this is why I don't think intelligent people start businesses. Because intelligent people think to themselves, wow, this is going to be hard. They actually think about what they're about to do. When I did this, I just did it. You know, like I kind of always knew it was going to happen. And things in my personal life meant that there was a good opportunity for me to take it. And I thought, well, screw it. Let's go. And I did it. And it was the weirdest thing because when you start up on your own, there is just a million things, you know, I mean, it, every single, every like quarter of the business so far has been a whole new set of emotions and, and challenges. But I remember the, the, the first three months, I have this memory in my head that I, I will always remember now. It's just incredible of me sitting at my dining room table with my computer and my book. And I always, use, I'm very organized. I always used to write my, you've probably read a lot of books about, you know, um, categorizing your to-do list by, you know, A, B, C, D, E, by ensuring that your, your, you know, high priorities to least priorities, you know, and how quickly you need to do a task. I always did that. I even color coded it, everything. But with the business, I started and I remember having my book and thinking, what do I do? <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. what do I do? So what did I do? I just started calling people. I picked up the phone and called everyone I know and I just told them I start up a business and told them what I do. Most of them were like, oh cool, fine, you know, nice to know, you know, you know didn't need any moment. But I just picked up the phone, told them what I do, told them what I do and then I called all the people that introduced me business, let them know what I do, let them know what I do. I then met up with all the people that could potentially refer me business, let them know what I do. I met up with anyone that could potentially refer me business on a monthly basis and I checked in with them on a phone call weekly or potentially fortnightly. And I just made sure that at every minute of the day I was doing something because it's all about what's the next step, what's the next thing you can do. 
Because if you look at the big picture, it's going to be daunting and you're going to give up. Yeah. But if you look at what the next step is, you can see that far. You know, I mean, starting a business is like driving in the fog. You know, as long as you can see enough to know where the lines are in the road, then you'll probably be all right as long as you're not trying to go too fast. Uh, but it's all about the next step. Wow. Okay, that makes that makes a lot of sense. And then I guess as you progress, you you find the next step, and then yeah. you're constantly evolving, right? Absolutely. It's always you an know, evolution. And, and this is it. I mean, now I have other problems. Now I have problems where. You know, we're, we're doing a lot of business, yeah. but I'm starting to recognize that some business isn't good business because it's wasting my time and I'm not really getting a lot from it. Mm -hmm. And I'm establishing that I need to be more filtering the types of things that are coming in. And how can I do that? You know, how can I recognize a good opportunity? What are the right questions to be asking? But this is where the learning aspect comes in. You know, we've, we've now got more data because I've done more things that I can now make future calculations on, which means that I can make better business decisions, but there's still now harder business decisions. I mean, if you think of a math question, one plus one is easy, but one plus one plus one plus one plus one, you know, like once you get into the, the bigger numbers and then it's just all of that together, and you, it's gonna take you a work, time to work out, it's a harder sum and it's just the more information, but as long as I can figure out what the next step is, mm -hmm. you're all good. You're all wow. good to go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I yeah. think the two things you need to know, where you want to be yeah. and, a, and a very rough idea of where you want to be because it's going to change, but a rough idea of where you want to be. I, I, I work on 20-year plan, where I want to be in 20 years and what am I going to do tomorrow? And I think if you know those two things, you're heading in the right direction because this tells you what you should be doing today mm -hmm. and what you should be doing tomorrow. And the problems that are in front of you also suggest what you need to be doing next. Okay. So those two things together gives you the calculation of what's next. So, you, okay, this is great because this is a philosophy and, and a mindset that a lot of successful people have seen. Mm. I was telling you earlier, it's about thinking in decades, right? Oh, yeah. So let's say you have a 20-year plan, right? Yeah. Are there things that you should look out for that you feel like are taking away power or the ability to progress on that onto that twenty year plan. Okay. And what would you say those things are? And what should we look out for when we are making our yeah. ten year, twenty year plans? So when you're establishing what you want to be and who you want to be. Yeah. You know, you know this could be through yeah. relationships, this could yeah. be through I mean, situations. That, that's what I'd come down on. I mean, you know what? I was very lucky. When I was about nineteen I met a mentor in the bank and he took me out one day, he had a property business, he was a property developer, he showed me around all his properties, and he just did it because he, I was a young, hungry guy and he wanted to show me around. Um, anyway, he went to this hotel, lovely hotel, you know, tried to wow me, but it doesn't matter. What he did is he said, Ben, look, if you don't know what you want in life, you're never going to get it. And then he proceeded to say, okay, well, what car do you want? I said, okay, well, I don't know, a Ferrari. He said, okay, what colour do you want it? I said, no, red. I said, what type of rims do you want? I don't know, black ones, you know, it's like, what, kind, what interior colour? What kind of stitching? What kind of steering wheel? How do you want your mirrors to look? What kind of back seats? You want back seats, front seats? He said, if you don't know exactly what you want in life to the finest detail, how are you going to recognise the opportunity when it comes to you? Now, in everything in life, when you know what you want, yeah. it's easier to get it. So that's step one. Now you say, how can you then, when you, I mean, when you recognise what you want, you've got to think to yourself, well, okay, well, if I want that, what's going to get in my way and for me i ended up writing a list of what i wanted in a wife because your wife or your partner whoever you're going to be with is going to be the person that motivates you or destroys you that is the most important human being in your entire life and the most important decision you'll ever make so you need to write a list for your wife and then you need to name a number of things you know one to whatever you do and if they don't have the top three to five things, then never go on a second date with them. Because at the end of the day, that person is going to be the reason that you're happy or sad, and is going to be the reason that you're motivated or you're demotivated. Most important decision, I believe, you will ever make. Amongst that, friends. Who are your friends? Because if you have friends that don't believe in you, get rid of them. I did, honestly. Best decision I ever made. People pretend to want to see you do well. They don't. You know, and they will pull you behind. They will, like crabs, keep you in that bucket. 
you need to kick them out, you need to be able to proceed without them. It's so vital. And that's the only way to proceed and actually be successful in life, is to surround yourself by not only people who are motivated, want to be successful, but also people that will look you in the eye and tell you what you need to hear. My best friend in the entire world said to me one day, he said, Ben, you always say you want to do things, you work really hard for it for six months, and then you give up. And I was like, basically in my head, fuck you. You know, I was, um, and there's no other way to say it. I, I remember internally in the moment being like, hey, how can he say that? You know, he's meant to be my friend, whatever. One week later, I realized that I've never had a better friend in the entire world. I realized that exactly what he said was exactly the truth. And if he had never said that to me, I don't think I would have ever realized it and taken the time to think about it. Because he was right, I used to be so energetic about one thing for about six months and then I'll get bored. And it's true, let me clarify one thing in life, you get bored. I get bored in the business sometimes, but you just need to crack on a few days and then the excitement comes back. Yeah. But if you give up in that moment, you lose it forever. So it's so vital that you have friends that will point out the things that you need to hear. Not what you want to hear, have hard decisions instead of easy decisions be the ones that are the reason that you become successful. So it is vital that you pick your people and you're in control of that. You know, know what, you're, know what you need, know who you want to be. And if you're a millionaire, are you going to re, uh, you're not a rapper. You're not taking your whole, you know, friends from wherever you were back in the day with you and then just letting them pay for you. That isn't reality. If you're starting a business and you want to be successful, you will become successful if you have successful people around you who have a similar mindset to you. So grow together. We're a community. We're a, you know, humans. If, if we are a bunch, if we are, you know, a pack, yeah. hence why we actually called our company Panthera, because we are a pack of panthers who, me and my business partners, we want to work together and we want to take on the financial world together. Uh, and that was always the, the, what, what it came from. Um, that's what okay. it's about. Wow, yeah, that's a very, very good point because mm. I think, you know, I was saying this earlier where mm. when you're at least younger, you know, at least in my age where status is a big thing, yeah. having a lot a, a lot of friends is mm. seen as a, as a really oh, yeah. big thing, right? You know, you want to be that guy or that girl that has a lot of friends mm, mm. that, you know, has an X amount of followers on Instagram yeah, yeah. Or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think that's natural. Yeah, uh, that's just is. human nature. And that's fine. Yeah. It's fine. But I think what I realized is, you know, as especially coming into the real world after mm. university and school, mm, mm. where it's, everything's in a bubble, mm. coming out of that, you realize that it's actually quality of friends Absolutely. that matter. And I, and I know this is an obvious statement, no. but you don't really realize, truly realize it until like, you know, you can call them up and then mm. you can depend on them. Oh, absolutely, or, you know, yeah. you can talk about real hardcore issues just like yeah, what we've yeah, yeah. been yeah, talking about here with them yeah. rather than just talking about the latest i don't know score on the yeah. weekend you and, know yeah. i i don't that's what i've i've kind of realized as well mm. sometimes you get a mixture of friends and that's okay yeah what would yeah. you say to like people that potentially you see potential in them mm. they've shown glimpses that they want to change they yeah. want to do things yeah but you know once you've offered advice once you've kind of offered your take on life mm. They say, yeah, but they don't want to do it. And they don't do it. Well, uh, the one thing I will say is that it, it's okay to not happen right away, you know? I mean, it wasn't, it was maybe four, five years ago my friend told me that information and that, you know, changed my mind. And I'm 26, so, you know, if you're, if you're in your 20s, like, give yourself a break, right? Yeah. Is what I will say. Like, we are in a point of our life of learning and taking in as much information as possible. Um, the one thing I'd just try and stay away from is that if you, know, if you have friends that you're doing destructive things around, then that's more important to, to, to get rid of sooner than later because that's gonna prevent your ability to ever become successful. Because if you, if you have addictions to you know, drugs, alcohol, and you just go out and party and stuff, you, you're never gonna get anywhere doing that. But I, I would say, look, I appreciate people don't change right away and I'll give my, 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 my thoughts to people. But if I really see potential in someone, I think they'll come around. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, when I had a really hard time growing up, I struggled with drugs uh, and I was just off the rails on a way that I can never explain. But I always had a fire inside of me 
something that told me that I was going to do something. I never really knew what, mm -hmm. uh, but I just knew something was going to happen. And even when I was smoking weed every day, doing other harder drugs and, you know, going to the worst of places, you know, when I was younger, telling my parents I was sleeping at a friend's house and, you know, being around a crack den or something, not doing crack, but, you know, worst of places, you know, I still knew something was going to come out of it. I still knew. I don't know how. I don't know why. But I think if you if you have that feeling, you know, you, you know it, you're, you're it, it's path. gonna happen. Yeah, it's gonna happen one way or another. It's, I don't know. Yeah. Sometimes I just feel destiny's got something for you. You know, like because this fire for me now is oh, honestly, it's just this disgusting amount yeah. of you know ambition, drive. You know, not motivation. Motivation is temporary. This stuff is. I wake up every day and just do it. You know, and it's, it's discipline. It, it's discipline, yeah, and that comes, you know. But people that have that, they they know. I yeah. think. I think. So if you are that, relax. You know, it's okay. You're, you're young. Mm -hmm. Don't stress, but do think about what you want. Yeah, because the, the sooner next you step, do, like you said as well. Yeah, exactly. You know, it, it, everyone's at different stages. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And that's all I'd say to someone that's not changing yet. Like it's okay, mm -hmm. but you know do consider what you want. Because at least if you know what you want, you might naturally just start changing anyway. Yeah, yeah. I that. think that's a good way of doing it. Like if you, if, if you say that you want to change and you're not changing, what do you want to do with a job? Who do you want to be your wife? Who do you want to be your friends? What type of car do you want? What type of house do you want? I genuinely have a list of every single one of these things. And when I met my partner now, my long-term partner, she had the top 15 things on the list, I'm gonna marry her. Because I know one day when the love is not as intense as it was when we first met, I will still know that she is the person that I wanna spend my life with. And I think it is really important that we do have family units, personally. This is my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. I would yeah. like to have a family unit when I'm older, um, and I would like to make sure my kids have that. So mm -hmm. uh, that's why picking that partner is important. And also, come on, if you're trying to run a company and you're dealing with a divorce, like, you know. yeah. Unless you're a nutter like Elon Musk or a psychopath, you know, it's going to be trouble. No. It's going to be trouble. Yeah. No, fair enough. Wow. Okay. And, and, and one thing like, what do you want in life? Uh, really mm. defining that. You, you said you, you heard that from your mentor. Yeah. So as, I, I actually want to find out, like, how, what would you say is the best way to find a mentor? Really good question. Um, I think they're everywhere. Um, if you're in a business at the moment and there is somebody in a management role who is doing really, really well and you look up to in any way, shape or form, I would encourage you to ask them for things to do and do it. You know, when that person says, can you do this for me? Do it first. Drop everything, get it done. Show them that you're a reliable person that they can invest time into. Once you start looking after them and showing them that you are almost a mini version of them or make them feel, you know, like you are trying to follow in their footsteps, um, you know, ask them for advice, ask them for tips. They'll naturally pull you under their wing. You know, I think it normally happens. Um, and honestly, yeah, mentors are the most important thing you'll have in your entire life. I think it's so important that you try and find somebody that's doing what you want to do or is in a business that you are in and is doing, you know, is in the successful place. You know, even if you're in a sales job and there's a guy who's just the most high guy getting all the sales, Become friends with him. You know, flocks of a feather fly together. You know, find the people that are doing the things that you believe that you should be doing and want to be doing and find them, talk to them, become a part of them, you know. Oh, yeah. This is the key, you know. And always, you know, older people, you know, every single person you meet, no matter if you think you're better than them or not, learn lessons. Yeah. Everyone has a lesson to teach you, you know. Yeah. Even the guy that comes and cuts our grass, he knows how to cut grass better than me. Yeah. Right. We have a lesson to learn from everyone. So just don't be don't be one of those guys that thinks you're better than everyone because you're not. Uh, we're all the same. We're all good people. We're all living our life doing this and doing that. Yeah. Just listen to everyone. Everyone's got a lesson to learn. Uh, but mentoring. Yeah. Find somebody that's in a place where you want want to be and ask them questions, help them out. And I think these things naturally happen. Wow. That's OK. That, yeah. OK. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah. That's really, That's great. Thank you yeah. for that. Um, yeah. That will actually definitely help help us as well. Yeah, pleasure. Um, one thing is actually like if you, I want to dive into a little bit about human psychology if you don't mind. Yeah, sure, sure. I think I've seen you with people. I know what people say about you, and they mm. always speak highly. Mm. I think you have such an amazing way 
with people and like mm. you said that's your you said that's your key skill it's quite right. yeah i think so but, yeah. but but networking has taken you can take on people far in life yes, right yeah. all walks of life yeah how would you say what would you say like some tips or like human psychology that we can take on board and start mm. to implement yeah that would naturally just you can get along with people absolutely well um first thing is do it you know um i was very good at putting myself into situations that scared me you know i mean in terms of people networking, especially me, when I was 23 years old as a business manager for a bank, uh, walking into a room of people probably mostly in their 40s and telling them that I've had their business, business is money. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, normally had to involve a lot of, you know, people looked at me and were like, wait a minute. <laughs> he wants to go after my money? Like, you know, he can't even grow a beard. I still can't. <laughs> um, but it was a situation where you have to just, you know, you learn so much by doing, you know, fear disappears by implementing it over and over and over and over and over again, you know, um, and a really other good example of, of, of conquering fear was we used to go into schools and provide talks about, um, uh, about finance, try and teach kids about education uh, and finance. And I remember, you know, we agreed to do an assembly of year nines, 350 year nines in a room. Well, and, you know, crowd. turns out, yeah, I mean, year nines, let me clarify, <laughs> mm -mm, not easy yeah. for one. And then two, 350 people. That was, you know, it's quite a lot. And I remember thinking, wow, this is scary. But, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I just did it. <laughs> and then I loved it. I had a great time, you know. And I don't know, is it a natural thing? Maybe, I think we all have natural talent in some way and there's some things, you know, footballers, some footballers are just especially, at, you know, yeah. athletic and, you know, they've got the talent and it's not just the hard work, but it's talent and hard work together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, nothing will happen without hard work. You know, some skills can't be taught, some skills can't, but anything, anything can be done, right? I've met some people that are, you know, not, the best talkers in the entire world, but they're very successful in, in other ways. And yeah. I think, you know, in my job, for example, you might not be the best with people, but you might be really good at what you're doing. So people then naturally come to you for the, for the fact that you yeah. do a good job. So in, in networking in people, my only recommendation is go, you know, even if you are in a job right now that doesn't require you to go network and just go and meet people, mm -hmm. you know, just do it from a self development point of view. Just say, I'm trying to meet businesses, trying to meet people. You'll meet other people. You'll put yourself into a position that scares you. Mm -hmm. And the more you do it, the less you'll be scared, the better you'll become. And next thing you know, you'll have overcome a fear and you'll be able to walk into any room, talk to any person. And the next thing you know, you're able to walk up to the CEO of a massive company and win a deal uh, and, 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 absolutely you know improve your business your business you know the business you work for whatever uh, but yeah practice consistency do it you know mm -hmm. just like going to the gym you know show up show up show yeah. up yeah and, it, and it's all about hard work as well like you said like putting in the hours yeah. all about the hours man i mean yeah. the one thing i hate is i don't want to be that guy to say yeah work all the hours do all this and do all that um but yeah i mean I don't, I'm not saying I work all the time, but for me and my business, I picked up a phone call the other night. It was, it was a Sunday night at 10 o'clock because it was a client that needed support. Yeah. And I called them and I spoke to them and that's fine. Um, for me, it's more about working all hours of the day at any time and just being accessible. Yeah. I'm not necessarily saying that I'm working 24 hours a day. I'm not, I'm not Elon Musk. You know, I, I believe sleep is important. Mm -hmm. Sleeping eight hours, well, seven hours every night, seven and a half hours, seven and a half ideal, seven, yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm vital you know exercise vital yeah. you know and for me it's also about mixture you know i i don't want to do the same thing all day long that bores the crap out of me but work needs to be varied work needs to have different sort of things in it yeah. for you to 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 be able to cope you know so for me i work a lot weekends and everything but i'm not really working because you know, some days I'll be seeing people, some days I'll be doing our marketing campaign, some days I'll be doing applications, sometimes I'm sorting out some, some administration or stuff. There's such a big mixture of stuff. Yeah. And in a business, you have flexibility. You know, if I really just think one day I'm feeling like crap and I'm not going to do any work today, you know what I do? I don't work. Mm -hmm. Because I also believe that, you know, we're human. And I'm, I, and, and the, the, I'm really highlighting this because I don't want people to think this obnoxious work culture but at the same time like 
if you really want something and yep. you really love something, you'll just do it anyway mm -hmm. and it won't really be work. Yeah. So if you just try and focus on that, you'll do more without knowing you're doing anything, mm -hmm. for one. And then two, also, look, we all have good days and bad days. So just don't feel down if you're having a bad day. Like, yeah. it's okay. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we all do. Mm -hmm. You know, just be concerned if you're having 10 out of, you know, if you're having 9 out of 10 bad days, you know. Yeah, yeah that's when you've got a problem, yeah. right? You know, don't be a negative Nelly. Mm -hmm. Don't say negative stuff all the time. Don't be that guy that when people see that, oh, it's this guy, you know? Be positive, think about good stuff. If you don't enjoy your job, lie to yourself. Trust me, lie to yourself. Yeah. One day you'll start believing that you can do it and work is like a game, right? Yeah, you like yeah. video games? Then why play video? I hate video games, personally. It's just me, I just don't like video games. But I like the video game of life. Yeah. You know, I like the game of chess of life. I like to, to play business. I think business is the best game out there. Yeah. You know, there's so many different strategic ways of becoming successful. There's so many different, you know, tactics. There's so many different types of, you know, uh, you know, if you're in an army game, there's so many different types. There's the sniper, there's the machine yeah, gun, whatever yeah, the guy. Yeah. You know, there's so many different types of businesses that you can be to be able to attack the same goal and to be able to yeah. achieve the same things. You know, make life like a game. Make it exciting. Yeah. You know, think about what well, what excites you, you know. And I think to myself, wow, when's the next deal? Yeah. You know, what can I do to get the next customer? Who can I talk to to introduce me more stuff? How is my tactics working? You know, and learn from those around you and make it fun. Mm -hmm. Life is all about making it fun. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's all about the perception shift of work. Mm. If you gamify your life, gamify, absolutely. Then you've literally changed that perception. Absolutely, yeah. And you know, work isn't work. It's, work isn't work, yeah. It's, it's part of your life. And, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But yeah, that, that, to be honest, that's what I've seen and read from top people in, in the world as well. They've all, they've obviously put the hours in every day. But yeah. Some people might look at it and be like, okay, that's a bit obsessive. Yeah. But actually to them, maybe it's not obsessive. It's just oh, yeah. how they view, yeah, like yeah, what yeah. they want out of life. Yeah, yeah. And that's also why I highlight do what you love, mm -hmm. but also love what you do. And what I mean by love what you do is, is, is if you tell yourself you don't like something, eventually you'll convince yourself you don't like something. Mm -hmm. um, and if you lie to yourself and say you love it, yeah. I think one day you can convince yourself it, mm -hmm. you know, so, and that's just a positive mindset. Yeah. You know, I genuinely believe that, you know, it, it, optimistic people end up being the ones that end up being successful because they kind of believe that they could do it. Yeah. You know, if you don't believe something, nothing ever happens, right? You've got to believe it before you can achieve it. One of my yeah. favorite sayings used to be growing up, if you believe you can yeah. achieve it, you yeah. always used to be my thing. Yeah. And I genuinely think, you know, you can probably change your mind about a job, you know, if, if you believe you like it, because if you believe you like it, you'll work a bit harder, you'll be a bit more successful, you'll get a bit more kudos, you'll make a few more friends out of the, the people around you. They'll be like, well done, well done, well done. And that kind of fuels you as well. And then you have this Scrolls, fuel, and yeah. then you like it, and then you realize it's not about what you're doing, it's about actually the game. Yeah. As yeah, you say, yeah, yeah. it becomes something different. It's not just, you know, yeah. I'm an accountant and I put numbers into a spreadsheet. It's no, I just won four more clients. Yeah. And, you know, now my boss is saying, wow, you're the best guy this month. How'd you yeah. do that? Yeah. You know, and it is that recognition and things. And, you know, I appreciate there's some businesses that are pretty toxic, but you can also just do that internally. Like, wow, I did that. Yeah. And remember, it's all about you at the end of the day. Don't do things or not do things for a business. If you have a terrible business, don't stop working for them because they're bad to you, because the only person that's actually going to screw over is yourself. You know, work the hardest you can in everything you do, because you want to make sure that when you go somewhere else, that you're at the top of your own form. You know, think about it. It's all about your own mental progression, your own personal development. Think about yourself. You're always your brand, not the business brand. You know, when I was a business manager, you didn't bank with the bank, you banked with me. You know, you banked with Benjamin Viss. I was your business manager and that's what it's all about, you know, make yourself better just because whatever your circumstances are, you don't like them, you know, kind of sometimes try and, try and lie to yourself, yeah. lie to yourself, just wake up every day, see yourself in the morning, I love my job, I love my job, at first it will feel horrendous, yeah. but I'm sure one day you'll get there and you'll be like, bloody hell, I guess I do, mm -hmm. I guess I do love my job and yeah. that's what I hope anyway. No, absolutely, people, that makes yeah. complete sense Yeah. and I, I can definitely relate to that as well. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. But no, thank you so much. I really appreciate okay. you taking no, the time no, no. and actually sharing your thoughts as well. It's Absolutely. been extremely insightful and this is the first time I've ever done this. So Absolutely. Look, I hope it's useful. I love it. You know, Absolutely. 
Um, I'd love to share my message. I'd love to, you know, and, and, and hopefully this will be more worthwhile in a few years' time. Once, yeah, we're looking you know, once back, I'm yeah. a multi-millionaire. Exactly, that, right? <laughs> exactly. Speak it to existence, man. Thank you, man. Thank you so much, man.